toy fans and welcome to the new Analog Toys collection room. I'm going to take you through every single cabinet. Pretty much in this room here houses the vintage collection. There is a little bit of modern in here, but it's primarily vintage. And then over in the studio, we have another setup with most of the modern toys. So I'll be taking you through there a little bit later on. But um, let's dig into these uh, vintage toys and I'm going to walk you through my collection. Come with me, toy fans. Okay, we're going to start over here with the only part of the collection that's not a glass cabinet. Um, there's a little bookcase in the entrance to the room here. I actually really narrowed the entrance to the room, but never mind. Um, we've got here my Incredible Hulk collection. So there is the um, Marvel Select, uh, what's that like, the Gladiator Hulk or the Ragnarok Hulk. Um, we've got Amigo Hulk at the back there, 12 inch. The Toy Biz Incredible Hulk. There's a carded Mego 8 inch Hulk at the back. We've got the 12 inch boxed Hulk. We've got the 8 inch both loose and boxed. Got a Hulk lunch box. Incredible Hulk uh, annual. Here's the gorgeous Marvel Legends uh, San Diego. I think this is a San Diego Comic Con Hulk. Very kindly donated to the channel by my buddy Sal at Two Cents Toys. Here we've got some of the modern. Um, excuse me. Here we've got some of the, the modern um, retro figures, the small retro figures, but I've got them carded there. Um, a first issue, Toy Biz Hulk, and the absolutely gorgeous, stunning um, Corgi Hulk uh, Mazda pickup truck, boxed and loose, that both came from my good buddy, Keith Knight. Now, moving down here, we get to a bit of an A-team shelf. There's the Galoob tactical van. There's the three and three quarter inch figures. Behind that, we've got the boxed um, attack tank. Behind that, the boxed uh, headquarters set that came from Jody, Gen X Toys Geek. There we've got the box 12 inch um, Mr. T. It's not B.A. Baracus, although it was made by Galoob. This is branded Mr. T and not A-team. And there we've got the heroes, including Amy Allen in the Galoob six inch range. Now moving down here to somewhat of a Transformers shelf. There's another toy donated by Jody. There's Jetfire, um, Soundwave, which I think came from Johnny Sorensen. If I got that wrong, I apologize to whoever donated that to the channel. Um, some more donations here of some um, very nice quality um, kind of knockoff Dinobots. And then at the back there, we've got a box Optimus Prime and a boxed Megatron. Now, let's get to the Action Man slash 60s GI Joe wall. And there is a hell of a lot to go through here. So we're gonna start over in this cabinet. Here at the back, you should be able to see, I've got the Action Soldier, Sailor, Pilot and Marine from Hasbro, 1964, mint box. The original figures are still inside the boxes. All the paperwork, fantastic condition. One of the things when I moved into this new studio and this new collection room is I had to pare a lot of stuff down. So I've put some of my favorite figures on display here from that era of GI Joe. So we've got the Marine Jungle Fighter, um, the Army Military Police, the Air Police, the Shore Patrol, and the fully loaded um, Action Marine kind of combat. I had to put a number of other G.I. Joe figures into storage because I just don't have the space. So what I've decided to do is um, pick a select few figures, some of my favorites. I've had to do the same thing down here with my kind of 60s Action Man. I wanted a representation of Army, Navy, and Air Force. So we've got the fully loaded combat soldier there. Um, the ski patrol at the back, which is also army. A medic at the back there, also army. Here we have the navy attack, who also has the very rare life ring. And the air force scramble pilot. Moving further on, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. The 1960s judo outfit, an extremely, extremely rare action man outfit. Um, the polar explorer, 
apologies, I keep bumping the uh, camera on the glass. Um, another version of the Polar Explorer with the supply sled, and then the Red Devil, as well as a carded 1960s Action Man Red Devil outfit at the back. Now moving down to the bottom shelf here, we have the Soldiers of the World. So the German Stormtrooper, can't quite see the British Commander at the back there, Russian Infantry, French Resistance Fighter, Australian Jungle Fighter, and my favorite, the Green Beret. Moving up, now we get into kind of 1970s Action Man. These are some more of the Soldiers of the World that were kind of re-released in the early 70s. A new addition was the French Foreign Legion. I've got the very rare carded um, Escape from Cold, it's Escape Officer outfit with the officer in front. Australian Jungle Fighter with the new uniform. Now he's got long pants instead of those dorky looking socks, uh, socks and shorts set up. There we've got the German Staff Officer with a carded uniform behind him and a 1970s German Stormtrooper. Here's one of my all-time favorite shelves in the whole collection. These are the Action Man Ceremonials. So we've got the Argyle and Sutherland Highlander, Blues and Royals, the Lifeguard, the Grenadier Guard, and the 17th 21st Lancer. And at the back there, a carded Grenadier Guards outfit. Down to some of the adventurers here, we've got the Underwater Explorer, the very, very rare Space Explorer. We've got a carded Mountaineer outfit from the 70s with a 1960s Mountaineer there with full high altitude set. And of course, the Deep Sea Diver. And then moving down to an entirely British shelf, we've got the paratrooper with the parachute pack and parachute helmet, um, Royal Air Force, um, British officer in dress uniform, Royal Military Police, and the Royal Marine Commando. Now this shelf here has a bunch of basic boxed figures. Uh, I put these figures on this shelf with the recreation of the original gripping hand that was molded, sculpted and molded by Bob Breakin. He gave me this when I made the Story of Action Man documentary. Um, these weren't the first figures to have gripping hands, but this is the fa my favorite uh, box artwork of any of the different eras of Action Man, which is why I've got my collection here of soldier, sailor, adventurer, and helicopter pilot on that shelf. Now we get down to what they call the kind of wood grain era. They call it the wood grain era because the carded outfits being released at this time had a wood grain kind of pattern to the edge of the box. So here we've got the classic outfit of the commando. We've got the mine detection there, the sabotage set complete with a dinghy and all the explosives, a new version of the medic and the field training exercise with the dispatch rider and the mine detector carded outfits at the back. Now we get down to something of an SAS shelf here. Um, SAS underwater attack, um, SAS squad leader. Here we've got the action man talking commander with the rare uh, hat, cap badge of the SAS. Another SAS kind of trooper there and then the secret mission. Down to the Emergency Series. I really like this series because it's so colorful. We've got the crash crew, the undergoing rescue, got the fireman at the back there with the carded outfit, highway hazard, high rescue, and kind of topping off that collection. Up over here, we have the police motorcycle and motorcyclist. And I'll talk more about that later on. Okay, over to the kind of the final action man cabinet. We've got here, some of the Eagle Eye soldiers, so the new version of the Parachute Regiment, um, US Paratrooper, the new version of the Royal Marine Commando, uh, the brand new Royal Engineer, we've got the US Machine Gunner, and then the US Marine at the back there is actually from the International Series, and carded outfits at the back include US Machine Gunner and the Royal Marines at Mountain and Arctic. Now we get down to pretty much a, a German shelf, I'd say. Um, we've got the German Panzer Captain there, a custom of the Africa Corps officer that I created. Behind them, a carded Panzer Captain outfit, along with the German Paratrooper, the Africa Corps Lance Corporal, 
and the Africa Core motorcycle and sidecar. Now we get down to the Space Rangers. Space Ranger Commando, Talking Space Ranger Commander, the Space Ranger Captain in a box at the back there. Got the patroller outfit carded. There we've got um, Rom the robot, who is a member of the Action Man Space Rangers and a Zargonite pirate. Now we get to a really interesting shelf. These are the first three outfits released for the special team, which came towards right towards the end of the Action Man line. So the Arctic Assault, Underwater Assault, and Ground Assault. And then in the last year of Action Man production, they created the Missile Assault, which is at the back there, which is probably the rarest Action Man outfit ever made. And for me to be able to own a carded one is incredible. This came from the personal collection of Bob Breakin, the chief designer of Action Man for 17 of the 18 years it was in production, and a prize piece in my collection. As is, this pair of very, very rare prototype weapons that never actually made it into production for Action Man. They were shown in a couple of catalogues, um, but I was very kindly gifted these by Greg Hughes, another Palatoy Action Man toy designer. Okay, now we're gonna move up to the top. So again, due to space, I don't have a cabinet space to put these guys in, but I've got these nice, I've had these display boxes for Action Man for years. So I used as many of them as I could to put up a bit of a tiered display. So here we've got the, um, the modern British infantry, the new version of the German Stormtrooper. We've got the Luftwaffe pilot, Battle of Britain, a mint box Atomic Man, an Eagle Eye helicopter pilot, an Eagle Eye Frogman uh, mint box. That also came from Bob Breakin's personal collection. The basic figure, a mint box Tom Stone, We've got the British Infantry Major, another variation of the ubiquitous German Stormtrooper outfit, and the Royal Hussar. Moving up a shelf, German Camp Commandant. There we've got the 1960s Action Man Talking Commander, the Jungle Explorer. We've got Bullet Man, who um, for you G.I. Joe Adventure Team collectors out there, you'll know it also came out in the G.I. Joe range. We've got the Emergency Medic there, tank commander the action man footballer now i've got an arsenal one because that's the team i support i made a whole bunch of different teams i've got no interest in getting any of the others because i'm an arsenal fan um, the russian from the international series the dispatch rider um, the un soldier from the international series with a lot of add-on customized pieces um, a basic soldier figure with his kind of identity tag there and up to the top some 1960s stuff. So the Crash Crew, uh, basic action soldier, action pilot, um, landing signal officer. Then we get into the G.I. Joe soldiers of the world or soldiers of the century. Uh, the Japanese Imperial uh, soldier, which never came out in the Action Man range. Then we've got the French Foreign Legion, German Stormtrooper, Australian Jungle Fighter, Russian Infantry, uh, British Commando, and then topped off with a 1960s action soldier heavy weapon set. Now, again, in this, uh, in this storeroom here, storeroom wardrobe, this is just chock-a-block with more carded action man stuff. I just don't have the room to display it all. But I particularly, I've got a fascination with action man um, packaging art. So I picked some of my favorite pieces and I've put them up here. So there's my two large box talking commanders, the Space Ranger and the Action Man Talking Commander, the box for Secret Mission to Dragon Island, the Escape from Cold It set, um, a few of the, um, I was gonna say locker boxes, no, I can't remember what they call these now. These basically fold out with the outfit inside. Where, so when you first saw them on a toy store shelf, you had to actually pick it up and, and open it, open the front flap to see the uniform behind. Um, they were trying to sell the product based on the artwork. It didn't work very well and they quickly reverted back to artwork down the side and um, a blister. Um, two more of the carded special team outfits at the back. We've got Underwater Assault and Ground Assault. 
There's the Action Man motorcycle and sidecar that the dispatch rider should be riding. Um, but again, don't have room, so he's up in one of the boxes there. The police motorcycle box, astronaut, and then two more ceremonials on horseback. We've got the Blues and Royals and the 17th 21st Lancer. So there is pretty much the Action Man wall. And I was very deliberate when I laid this out in that I wanted to have the collection flow straight into Action Force. But before we get to that, let's take a look at this bizarre looking mannequin here. So I've always wanted to, I've had this mannequin for a number of years. I've never really had a good place to put it. I've always wanted to display my original uniform that I wore when I served in Iraq. I've always wanted to display it. And now that Bobby Valor has brought me into the Valorverse Action Force toy line as Desert Rat, it's like, I've got to display this now. So there's my original body armor. I changed the uh, camouflage flag to the colored flag because that's what it looks like on the figure. We've got the green shamar, the carabiner just like he has on the body armor. The knife on the front, that's actually a Swedish special forces knife um, that I acquired during Arctic warfare training. It's a very reliable knife. That's the one that I've carried ever since. Um, 511 tactical shirt and pants and desert boots that I actually wore. In Iraq, there's my old helmet. These boots are falling apart though. Um, the rubber is falling off them. I couldn't wear them now. Um, but if you're wondering why Desert Rat is wearing a Stormtrooper helmet, well, this is Bobby's idea for version two of Desert Rat, to basically just use the same figure and then steal a Stormtrooper head. No, I'm joking. The reason, the reason I've got the Stormtrooper helmet on here is because this mannequin has a very, very, pretty face it's a male mannequin who looks very effeminate and it's almost it was almost disturbing i originally had it displayed here with my helmet on and some sunglasses and i was like that is hideous so i hit his face with a stormtrooper helmet okay so as i said now we're going to flow into the action force area but this top shelf here is a lot of prototype stuff so there is the Paint Master prototype of Desert Rat, beautifully displayed behind glass, just how I like it. Accompanied with my kind of mini Desert Rat collection. So there we've got the rare bubble bath um, Desert Patrol bottle from Action Man, which I picked up because it's got um, artwork of Desert Rat on there. Here's two versions of the Long Range Desert Group Action Man outfit. Um, this one's been customized with a, with a desert colored helmet. This is the basis for the 1982 Palatoy Action Force Desert Rat figure. At the back there, the extremely rare carded version of the same outfit. That thing cost me a pretty penny, as did the Desert Rat carded figure. Collectors have told me that there's only supposedly about six of these known to exist in the world still on the card so paid a pretty penny for this but i had to have it in the collection and i, uh, I was amazed that it actually turned up within kind of five months of the announcement that i was going to be part of the new action force line and there's a nice um, example of a loose desert rat action figure now we move on to the sas prototype so uh, all of these have been gifted to the channel by that beautiful man, Bob Breakin. So at the back, we've got the carded version of the Series 1 um, SAS figure. This is before they went to the teams with, you know, Z-Force and the enemy team and all that kind of stuff. Um, that carded figure was donated to the channel by Bob Breakin. The loose figure in the middle there is one from my collection. But here we have the original metal prototype, which is about four inches tall. It's slightly taller as they made the toys back in that, those days, because once the mold was made, the plastic would shrink when it came out of the mold. So he's about four inches where the figure is three and three quarters. Um, there's a resin version of the same figure. He is missing a lower leg and a hand, um, but another very, very rare piece that was kind of mocked up to use at Toy Fair in London in 1982. And then some other unique pieces there, which are a set of um, metal arms that were like a test shot from a mold. There's a test shot of the front of the SAS torso, but in yellow plastic, they would just use whatever plastic they had on hand. 
and a resin shot of the head. And I figured since Condor is the modern Valiverse Action Force representation of an SAS figure, that I would put this beautiful paint master, which Bobby uh, donated to the channel. This is the paint master Condor from the first Kickstarter, which never got funded. The figure is the same as the eventual Valiverse release of Condor, but obviously the color scheme is entirely different. Um, I really, really like this design and I'm still quite overwhelmed that Bobby thought enough of me to, to donate this piece to the channel. And as you can see, it takes pride of place in my new collection room. There's a whole bunch of his accessories. Um, behind that is an interesting piece. That's an all black test shot of the Swarm flight pod. Um, another interesting piece that I really like. So this is not a prototype, but I thought it just made perfect sense to have the boxed Action Man SAS key figure kind of linking all this together. You know, here's the original Action Man version with the box. There's the first issue Action Force version on the card. And there is now a Paintmaster prototype and a sealed mint in box Condor from the new Valiverse Action Force toy line. Finally finishing off this shelf, we've got um, Captain Zarg on there, um, Enemy of the Space Rangers who was designed by Greg Hughes. And here we have um, a resin sample of the first style of um, Captain Zargon head. You can see there that the, the figure's face has teeth exposed. Palatoy's marketing thought this was a little too scary for children. So the revised version has somewhat of a mask across the mouth. Okay, now we get down to the Valorous shelf. This is kind of the only modern stuff that's actually displayed behind glass because I just adore this line. It's an extension of my beloved Action Man Action Force line and they just look great behind glass. So here's a bunch of uh, wasp raiders, sorry, uh, swarm figures. Behind them, I've got a sealed wasp. Uh, I've done it again. Well, there is a wasp raider there, um, but I've got a sealed wasp raider and a sealed swarm trooper. Here is the BotCon exclusive Wasp Raider Loose. There's a couple of Scarabs. I have a couple more in storage. Here we've got Bone Collector, Kerak, Sergeant Slaughter, Sergeant Slammer, the one of 500 in the box there. Sergeant Slaughter version two. Then we've got Rollout. I keep meaning to um, put a bunch of the file cards into the figure stands. That's how I want to display it. I just haven't got around to it yet. Um, there is the eventual production release of Condor. You see the new uh, uniform design compared to the uh, Series 1 Kickstarter design. Um, at the back here, we've got Tim Kennedy, one of my absolute favorite figures in the line. Uh, and behind him is a signed Tim Kennedy um, print of the original figure layout that, um, that Bobby very kindly gifted me. Here we've got a custom version that I created of Condor. This is what I call Jungle Ops Condor. There we have the Big Bad Toy Store exclusive declassified gear set on a Sergeant Slaughter. Well, it's a Sergeant Slaughter head with, um, what's that? That is, I think, Bone Collector's legs, um, Kerak's torso, it's a mishmash. Um, I've got a sealed Tim Kennedy at the back, a sealed Steel Brigade. And here's my squad of four Steel Brigade troops, all slightly differently equipped. So I've got, again, I've got more Valiverse Action Force figures than this. I just can't display them all in the same cabinet. Now moving down to the original Palatoy Action Force. So here we've got all of the 1982 figures and vehicles. Um, I don't have room to display the headquarters, so I've got it boxed up there, along with the Z Force headquarters. So down here, we've got every single basic figure from that original 1982 wave, all of the vehicles, a fantastic little collection that I'm incredibly proud of and, and pleased that I've managed to acquire. Now we get on to the Red Shadows and these guys are just damn awesome. We've got the Robo Skull, a complete Kraken, Skeletron, 
The Black Major, Baron Ironblood. There's the Hyena, which is the UK recolor of the GI Joe His Tank. Uh, that was in like a dark gray, kind of black color, the His Tank was. The Hyena in bright red to go with the red shadows. And of course, its driver is the rare UK recolor of Destro, named Red Jackal. You can see the red on his chest with the white Skull and Crossbones logo. Um, the name escapes me right now for that vehicle. That Red Shadow vehicle, I don't know why the name escapes me. Here we've got the Laser Exterminator, um, driven by a recolor of G.I. Joe's Cobra Commander, done all in red, that's Red Laser. And the red recolor of the G.I. Joe, or the Hasbro Cobra Snake Battle Armor, now called the Red Shadow's Escape Armor. Moving further down, we get to the Space Force. Um, there's the Triad Fighter at the back there, the Satellite Defense, a bunch of the figures. We move on to the Q-Force. We've got the absolutely awesome Sea Lion vehicle just there. I love that toy, that's incredible. Moving into the SAS range, um, the SAS Wolverine, which was a recolor of the G.I. Joe Wolverine with the pilot being named what did they name him here? Hunter. And he is a Palatoy recolor of the G.I. Joe Cobra officer. Um, UK recolor of the Cobra Fang, which is now uh, the SAS Hawk with the Pilot Blades, which is a recolor of Tripwire from G.I. Joe. We've got the SAS Silent Attack Kayak. Um, a bunch of the figures here and then the Panther and the mobile missile system, which are obviously more UK recolors of a GI Joe product. Now we get down to the Z-Force shelf. Here we've got the ATC. Not only a recolor of the GI Joe APC, but a real upgrade. Um, we've got the rare kind of medic and mind detector figures that were very late release figures. I've got a guy's falling over there. A recolor of the Ram Cycle and a recolor of Scarlet, named as Quarrel and the Rapid Fire Motorcycle. Some artillery pieces. We've got the recolored Z Force Mobat tank. Some more figures here. There is another figure's fallen over. I need to stand some of these up later. There is Jammer. It was a UK recolor of Stalker. Behind him is Gaucho, a UK recolor of Gun Home. And here's just one little portion of the Z Force headquarters with the Z Force Jeep standing up above. Finally, topping off the Action Force display, I've got some acrylic cases here to display some nice carded pieces. I would like to have an example from every team. So we've got the SAS squad leader there, we've got the SAS uh, weapons pack. We've got the Space Force weapons pack, Z Force weapons pack. Um, down here I have a carded Mouton, so the only thing I don't have a carded example of is Q Force, so I need to correct that. I need to get myself a, a carded Q Force figure or something. Um, some more boxes up the top. Not only do I like to display some of the nicer toy packaging up the top, it's also an excellent storage option. There are actually more boxes behind these boxes. Um, so, I mean, there's some, some Star Wars stuff there. We'll get onto that in a little bit. So here's the Lone Ranger collection. Um, again, I've got a huge Lone Ranger collection. I couldn't display it all. So what I opted to do was just display each of the core characters. So we've got Red Sleeves, Tonto and his horse Scout, uh, Sheriff Tex Dawson, Little Bear, Lone Ranger and Silver. You can see the Lone Ranger's nephew back there, that's Dan Reed. One of my favorite figures, which is El Lobo and Butch Cavendish. And now we get into Indiana Jones territory. Excuse me, I just burped. So there's the 12 inch box uh, Kenner Indiana Jones figure from the early 80s. We've got the Well of the Souls play set with a really nice condition vintage Kenner indie figure in Sala, and of course Marion Ravenwood 
which was gifted by my very dear friend Michael French of Retro Blasting. Um, we've got the map room place. I've got every single piece from the original Kenner Adventures of Indiana Jones toy line. The only thing here that's not original is Belloc's map, but it's a piece of paper, who cares? But other than that, I've got every single piece. Um, Indy on the Arabian horse, um, the Streets of Cairo mini playset, the excellent Desert Convoy truck. There's the mail away Belloc in ceremonial robe. And then behind that, I've got a really nice Indiana Jones um, Temple of Doom lunchbox topped off with the LJN Indiana Jones Temple of Doom figures. They only made three figures for that range. I have them all. There is no more vintage Indiana Jones that I need in my collection. This is one of the, the most complete collections I have. Um, I have no desire to add anything else to this lineup. Moving down here, I've got a bunch more Evil Can Evil stuff, but again, you can only display so much in one cabinet. So I've just got two of my favorite pieces here, the Sun Cycle and the Chopper Bike. And of course, Evil Can Evil in two different, but also still very iconic outfits. We've got a carded Evil Can Evil Arctic Explorer figure at the back, which doesn't make any sense. And there's just a, a, a box Mego Action Jackson because I had nowhere else to put him. Now we get to the six million dollar man collection. I've got a bunch of box figures at the back, including the Bionic Woman, Oscar Goldman, Master Tron, and the six million dollar man. Um, the loose figures out the front, I've got loads of versions of Steve Austin in different outfits. There's the first release of the six million dollar man. There's the second release of the six million dollar man. There's the $6 million man with the critical assignment arms and legs. There's Maskatron and of course, you can't forget Bigfoot. Probably the rarest, well one of the rarest figures in the range. Actually the last edition of um, Steve Austin is probably the rarest figure. Um, but I'm very pleased to have the Bionic Bigfoot in my collection. Now we get down to the Mego shelf. Um, at the back here we've got a 12 inch Superman. Um, here's a whole load of DC characters, a lot of Batman stuff. Uh, Riddler, Superman, Joker, Robin, we've got the Batmobile. Um, we've got the later edition Batman in the Batmobile. He doesn't have the removable cowl. Here's the very early version Mego uh, Batman with a removable cowl. At the back, we've got a carded Batman figure. We've got a box penguin. We've got a carded torch. We've got a box Spider-Man, um, Aquaman. Now we get into the Marvel section with Captain America, Falcon, Iron Man, Thor, Spider-Man, Green Goblin. I don't remember these guys being in the MCU. Now, here we've got some of my Star Trek figures. I've got a couple of carded ones at the back and then Starsky and Hutch also from Mego on their card backs. Now, when it comes to a real American hero. I have a lot more real American hero stuff. Um, when I was building this collection room, I kind of got down, I'd only allocated one shelf to a real American hero and I really had to be selective. So I chose all of the figures from the Action Force International he uh, Heroes first release in 1987, which is, that's what G.I. Joe was called when it was introduced in the UK in 1987. I wanted every single figure that I've collected from 1987, plus I picked one small playset from Cobra and Action Force, one small vehicle from Cobra and Action Force, and one large vehicle from Cobra and Action Force. So on the Action Force side of things, we've got Bazooka in Checkpoint Alpha, which is just a fantastic little mini playset. The Ore Striker, Lady J, Shipwreck Bazooka, I'm not gonna name every figure here. There's Dusty and Footloose, riding on the back of the Mauler, which was donated by a bunch of friends of, well, I was gonna say patrons then, but they're actually friends of mine. A whole bunch of my friends got together, um, put their heads together and managed to get me um, a Mauler and it's just gorgeous. The only thing I'm missing are the accessories for the driver, but it doesn't matter. It's such a beautiful, beautiful toy. Um, Cobra Bunker at the back there. Then we got the Hydrofoil that was donated by Jody. I got this 
originally for Christmas in 1987. And on the deck of the Hydra 4, we've got version one Storm Shadow, Cobra Eel, uh, Destro, a couple of the Dreadnoughts, the Crimson Twins. I'm not a fan of the Crimson Twins, but I've got them carded, so I wanted to display it. I thought they deserved to be out on display as opposed to in a storage box. Uh, the Cobra Stinger. Firefly is not from 1987 Action Force, but I love the figure so much he had to go in here. Um, Crimson Guard, Snow Serpent, Cobra Commander, and that's the hooded Cobra Commander, the mail away. So now we get down to Coleco's Rambo. Um, I've got every single figure and vehicle and the playset from Wave 1. I don't have anything from Wave 2, but I've got all the Force of Freedom characters. I've got all the vehicles now that I recently acquired that Skywolf from Reclaimers Vintage Toys. Um, there's the Defender. There's the Savage Strike Cycle with uh, General Warhawk, Nomad, Mad Dog. Sergeant Havoc, Gripper, Black Dragon, Colonel Troutman. I've got a number of carded figures at the back there. I think I've got five carded figures. The only vehicle not on display is, um, what do they call it? The helicopter. Was it the Skyhawk? The Skywolf? And the Skyfire Assault Copter. Um, it doesn't fit in the cabinet because the um, circumference of the rotor blades protrudes past the glass. So I've had to leave that one in storage. But other than that, I've got everything from series one of Coleco's Rambo line. Okay. Who wants to check out some Star Wars? When I moved into this house, quite unfortunately, this cabinet here had like two doors here that opened up and two doors here that opened up like that. And the movers managed to break two of the doors. So I tried to turn a bad situation into a positive situation where Star Wars has always been difficult for me to display because you need a, like a larger footprint for a lot of the vehicles. So I said, you know what? It might create a lot of dusting, but I'm just not gonna put the doors, I'm gonna take the doors off completely. And now I can actually fit, for example, the Death Star playset in here. Um, and a lot of other things that would normally you know, you see the wings of the X-Wing would not normally fit inside the cabinet. Um, and I'm really happy with the, uh, the overall way this turned out. So I've got a shelf up here, basically, of Rebel fighters and, and vehicles. So I've got um, original Kenner white X-Wing. I've got a Palatoy X-Wing there with the battle damage stickers. Sorry, guys, I was in a bit of a, a flow state there and everybody phone started ringing. Um, the A-Wing there, that is a 90s Power of the Force A-Wing that was kindly donated to the channel by George Aitken, um, as well as a lot of the Action Force stuff you uh, can kind of see uh, on the earlier shelves. Here we've got, uh, this. I wouldn't call this a Return of the Jedi shelf, this is a Tatooine shelf. So there is the incredible uh, Stan Solo Bantha with the Dewback being ridden by a Stormtrooper. A whole bunch of Creatures, aliens, Luke Jedi. There's the gorgeous Stan Solo Slave Leia figure with Jabba the Hutt. Um, with the Rancor, of course the Land Speeder, and this is where farm boy Luke lives. Moving down to this shelf, we've got the Death Star, the B-Wing on an isocritic stand, um, Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, which was donated to this channel by my friends at Retro Blasting. Thank you very much. Michael and Melinda, um, some Stan Solo droids. And then in the actual Death Star playset itself, of course, where else would Ben Kenobi be but um, deactivating the tractor beam. Um, Imperial Gunner. We've got some more Imperials here. That's Grand Moff Tarkin from the Kenner Retro Collection from a few years back. Some Stan Solo. Um, Luke and Hans. Luke and Han in Stormtrooper disguise from Stan Solo, and then an original Princess Leia. Moving over to here, we have the Battle of Hoth. Um, this X-Wing is the second issue, Kenner X-Wing, the gray one. I've just kind of hung it here with a bit of fishing line, but I think the overall effect looks pretty cool. So we've got the Atat here, 
with an Imperial Snow Trooper and Darth Vader inside. We've got my all time favorite Star Wars vehicle, the Snow Speeder. Um, he's actually being piloted by another retro collection figure. That's the um, Luke Snow Speeder from the Hasbro retro collection. Um, the Imperial Attack Base, which in my mind is not an Imperial base. That's why it's full of Rebels. Um, two Tauntauns, one is open belly, one is closed belly. I've got both variations. Um, the Wampa and a few of the kind of mini accessory sets. Now we move up to the Best Bin shelf. Now I know Yoda wasn't on Best Bin, but I wanted to display Yoda next to Best Bin Luke Skywalker. Sensor Scope R2-D2, there's the other Best Bin heroes. Um, that beautiful Leia figure there has an original blaster and that was, again, very kindly donated to the channel by my friend Michael French. There we have a big pair of orange tits. Um, we've got the Bounty Hunters at the back, sans Boba Fett, because he's over here by the Slave One. And hiding out in the corner here, we've got the Ugnaught and Lobot. Moving up here, we've got the blue TIE Fighter, the second edition TIE Fighter, with a really nice condition TIE Fighter pilot, another stand solo droid. There's the Emperor with a couple of his guards, and then we get to kind of the Endor section. So here are the rebel heroes of Endor. Um, all of the Ewoks outside of the Ewoks that were released in the last 17. There's the stand solo set of ghost Jedi figures, so Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Yoda, the ghost versions. There we've got the, um, the speeder bike and speeder bike rider, and the ATST. Up the top, again, some examples of some nice vintage carded figures, with my favorite one being Luke Bespin. Paid a fortune for him a number of years ago. I'm sure he's still worth what you now, probably more, but I don't collect toys for money. Um, again, I put some of my favorite boxes at the front, but behind them are even more boxes because it's great for storage. Um, we've got the box for the B-Wing, the Death Star playset there, the Scout Walker, and here's the Millennium Falcon with a few more figures. Um, the first issue, Han Solo, large head. I don't have a small head Han Solo. Chewbacca, um, the Gonk Droid, Greedo, and Walrus Man. And now we move into this corner cabinet. Well, I just I call it my 80s Kenner cabinet. This is Mask and Centurions. So I've mainly got first wave stuff in my collection. So on this shelf here, obviously, we've got the Rhino, the Firecracker. Uh, the Condor Motorcycle, uh, Gator and the Thunderhawk, and of course, Scott and T-Bob. Now we get down here, we've got um, somewhat of a Venom shelf. Um, the Jackhammer, oh my god, my brain froze. The Jackhammer, the Switchblade, the Piranha, the Manta, and the Hurricane, which is masked, not Venom, but I had more mask vehicles than I did Venom, so we've ended up on this shelf. Now we get down to Centurions. This is the first time I've ever displayed my Centurions collection. So I've got the five core characters, um, Ace McLeod, Jake Rockwell, and Max Ray. Is that his name, Max Ray? You know, it, it is hard guys walking around a collection like this trying to talk non-stop and have your brain not freeze up on you. Uh, Doc Terra and Hacker. So I've got the five basic figures and then I, I wanted to have at least one example of the three heroes with a bigger accessory set. So Max Ray ended up with two, so we've got Tidal Blast and Depth Charge there. We have, I think that's the Orbital Interceptor at the back there with Ace McCloud and then the Hornet with Jake Rockwell, which is a, a great toy. A uh, little kind of assault copter type get up for him. And that is the main vintage toy collection room. What I'll do now is show you the other stuff that we've got in the studio.
So I'm not going to show you the, the whole studio because it's a little bit messy. Um, I kind of have to make do with, with what I've got. Yes, that is a mattress there. Um, we have a spare bed, we have nowhere to put it. And we don't want to get rid of it because when people do visit, I will clean a lot of stuff out of this room and, and allow them to sleep in here. And I'm thinking, where am I going to store the mattress? And I'm like, you know what? That's good for soundproofing. As is this, which is just a basic petition with a with a duvet folded over it but anyway you guys don't need to see that junk this is mostly the modern display um, this is now where I do the live streams and this is going to be where I make the produce videos I've still got a little few things I need to get done but it's not completely modern in here we've got a bit of vintage so we've got some of my favorite GI Joe airframes so we've got the Tomahawk the Rattler and the Sky Striker. There's a box, vintage box Action Man Talking Commander there. Uh, I don't want to reveal it now, but I've got a plan for that. So I've just kind of put it there so I don't forget. Um, moving down to this shelf is my Star Wars Black Series collection. So what I've got on display loose are all Empire Strikes Back characters, except perhaps for Grand Moff Tarkin. And at the back there, are uh, boxed figures from other films that have been donated to the channel. Although I do have the uh, Degaba training Luke and Yoda there. Um, I know that's from Empire, but I didn't have enough room. And I actually think that looks set, um, looks pretty cool in the box. So here we've got a bunch of the Imperials and the Wampa. Then we get into some of the Rebels. You may be asking yourself why there is a beautiful minty loose crack and action figure sitting there. That's because I had this spare and I found out that my buddy Sal really wants one of these. So I've put it here so I don't forget to take this with me to Joe Fest and give it to my friend in person. This is Sal's Kraken. Um, not his crack, his Kraken. All right, <laughs> um, uh, moving on. Now we come down to my kind of small Marvel Legends collection. Um, I do like the Punisher, so I've got um, the Punisher with the motorcycle and then the, the, the loose, uh, not loose, sorry, um, the Legend series Punisher figure in the box there. But here we've got two of my favorite villains. This is Red Skull and Doctor Doom. Here is my collection, my favorite collection of the Avengers. So it's the 80th anniversary Thor, Cap, and Iron Man, and the Marvel Select um, Immortal Hulk. I want to make one change to this, and I want to swap out the 80th cap for the new 20th anniversary Marvel Legends cap. Um, Sal, I believe, has got one for me, um, so I'm just going to keep him here in the display until I meet up with Sal in America in a couple of months' time. Um, this is a really awesome little patriotic section here. I love you know, the Captain Americas and the Captain Britons and, you know, the, the superheroes that wear flags. So there's the awesome World War II cap on the motorbike that was designed by Bobby Valor. There is the movie, um, there's the Chris Evans Captain America from the first Avenger um, that came in the two pack with Peggy Carter. There we've got the Hydra Stomper from What If, along with um, the Captain Carter action figure from What If. Sorry, did I call her Captain Carter? That's Agent Carter. That's Captain Carter. Then we've got Captain Britain that was donated to the channel by my buddy Ryan, Laser Pants. You might know him. And then Union Jack, who I acquired very recently. Um, here is a small display of my Ghostbusters. So this is vintage. It had no room in the other collection. So we've got Slimer in there, Stay Puffed up there, uh, Venkman. Winston, Egon, and then I think Ray is actually inside the firehouse somewhere with the Ecto-1. Um, up here I've got my Black Series 1 to 1 scaled um, Luke, X-Wing Pilot Luke helmet. It just looks good. Excuse me, I'm burping. Uh, it just looks good on the top of the Kenner Ghostbusters firehouse. Uh, there's a Darth Vader Kenner collector's case with the original cardboard outer. Um, again, couldn't think of anywhere else to display it, so it kind of fitted here. Here's the gorgeous large size um, Hulk from the 1-6 scale Marvel Legends range. 
Um, a beautiful piece. I'll get another one designed by Bobby Dalla. Here we've got Castle Greyskull with um, um, Point Dread and the Talon Fighter on the top. But you'll notice that the figures down here are not vintage. I have got an enormous box in the storage of all my vintage stuff. I don't even want to display it anymore because every other day you walk in the collection room and one of the leg bands has snapped on a figure and he's fallen over. So I'm just displaying a handful of my favorite Origins um, figures and sets here. Moving down a little bit, of I've got my very small lunchbox collection there. I want to figure out something to do with that collection. I, uh, it deserves to be on display in a better location than just that. Um, the Hero Quest board game, there we've got the Mego Star Trek Enterprise. Um, the Batarang that came from Keith Holmesley, the one to one scale NECA version. There's that awesome Jackal that I got for Action Force, and we've got Sergeant Slaughter riding it. Um, a 90s Action Man, James Bond Thunderball. Some other stuff that I had no room for, there's the Black Series Snow Speeder. Um, the enormous uh, Gabriel Carson City playset for Lone Ranger. Um, C-3PO collector's case. And then down here, boxes and boxes and boxes of toys that I have no room to display. What have we got? Here is, I think, a bunch of... Oh, this is all vintage G.I. Joe and a bit of um, Fisher-Price Adventure People. Uh, Adventure People, Muhammad Ali, God knows what. I think there's a G.I. Joe Adventure Team helicopter in there. Lone Ranger and Evil Knievel stuff. Space is a premium. Uh, so that's pretty much the end of the tour. Here's just a whole bunch of different knickknacks and things that I need um, when I'm filming. There's a heap of leftover Action Force figures. I say leftover. Leftover from the display, got no room to put them. And more storage. Box toys galore. There's Tracy Island. And Captain Scarlet stuff. Um, there's all sorts in here. Just do not have the room for everything. And there you go. There is the new Analog Toys collection room and studio. We're going to be cranking out some awesome videos between now and Joe Fest in the next couple of months. Now that we're all set up and ready to go, so. Apologies, I've been a little bit inactive on YouTube over the last few weeks, I had to move house. But we're here now, we're set up, and I'm gonna get cracking on some more videos. And I hope you enjoyed this tour. Leave me some comments in the section below to let me know, you know, what you saw in my collection that you collect or what you don't collect, how your collection differs. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.